The time has come for the definitive guide to Day of Dragons in 2022. Just months before they completely change the game and we have to start all over. But it should still give you the basics. In this video, I will go over the absolute basics and some of the advanced items even the most seasoned veterans may not know. And I've also added chapters so you can more easily find what you're looking for. If you like content like this, or if you want to look back at some of the tips I've given you, go ahead and click the like button and the subscribe button, and if you really want to help out the channel, consider becoming a member, or just joining the Discord community. Remember, every time you subscribe, a baby dragon gets its wings. Oh hey, another one. Now it's time to make the biggest decision of the game. PvE or PvP? PvE or player vs environment? will put you up against the world created in Day of Dragons. Whereas PvP, or player vs player, puts you up against the environment and all of the other dragons on the map. I highly suggest getting your wings wet in a PvE server before you ever think about going into a PvP server. Unless being afraid of every shadow you see in a game you don't know is your cup of tea. Don't think for one second as a harmless defenseless baby, someone won't eat you. Kinda looks like a baby. Come here, I'm gonna eat ya! You can tell what type of server it is by looking on the right, right here. How many players are in the server is here, and your ping is here. The lower the ping, the better. Let's start at the beginning. When you first start the game, you'll be given two options. You can be a flame stalker, in chat they call it an FS, or a shadow scale usually called an SS in chat. The Flamestalker can, as you guessed it, shoot fire and has thermal vision for a special ability. The Shadow Scale shoots plasma bolts. You can charge up your bolt by holding the right mouse button down for just a few seconds before blasting your enemies for a harsher effect. The SS has the special ability to go invisible, which works unless the Flamestalker turns on the thermal vision. If you purchase the DLC, you may also have access to the Acid Spitter. In the chat, they call that an ASD. This is a wolf-like creature that spits acid and has a special ability of decaying bite. This bite will take life away from your enemies, kind of like a rattlesnake as its venom makes its way through the bloodstream. All of these special abilities are used by pressing the Q button. If you have not purchased the Acid Spitter, you can still be nested in if you can make friends with some people that will breed. None of the other dragons are available until the one point update expected sometime early next year. You will be able to choose your gender, and you will be given the option to choose either a random skin or an iconic skin. It's important to note here, some of the skins are available to Patreon members that you can't get in game. You will be able to unlock the melanistic skin on your first day, but more on that later. Now it's time to hatch. Hold the E button to hatch and you will find you are about the size of a chicken. It's good to mention here, days last 2 hours and nights last 1 hour. If you happen to hatch at night, use the V button for night vision. Use your A button to go left, your D button to go right, your W button to go forward and then hold ALT and S and that'll back you up. Fighting is done by clicking your right mouse button. At this age getting anywhere is a journey and you will quickly lose stamina. Your stamina bar is right here. Now is the time you're going to start looking for food and water. As a hatchling you'll be able to drink out of a small puddle and you can sustain yourself with red mushrooms. It's imperative you find food and water as soon as possible. You have about half an hour before you die of thirst and starvation. A huge difference in dragon choice here. As the Flamestalker hatchling, you'll go through food like crazy, and unless you have someone to hunt bugs for you, you're probably not going to make it to juvenile. Something to consider is hatchlings can drink from the small puddles and adults cannot. Be careful not to eat too many red mushrooms, as they will poison you as you eat them, yet sustain your food levels fairly effectively. There is no easy way to say this, but the Acid Spitters are OP, plain and simple. They can run like the wind, one bite using their special ability and your stamina drains, a shot of acid burns like hell, and basically, they will rock your world. So stay away from them at all costs. If you decide to play as one, there's a couple things you should know. Like they can swim. Using Z, you can swim underwater. This is especially effective in PvP servers 
as you can act as a crocodile and wait for the victims underwater. Using the X button will bring you back up to the surface. Bugs are highly nutritious for your dragon, yet somewhat deadly. You have two types of bugs. The first one looks like a scorpion and lives in mounds, much like a giant anthill. The second is called a spine scarab. They are also highly nutritious, but they'll fight you. If they feel they can win the fight, they'll fight back. When hunting bugs, the mound bugs will run from When hunting bugs, the mound bugs will run from you into their mound when you approach. Hunting is a chore, as your little legs just won't get there fast enough. The easiest way as an SS is to go invisible and get close. But it'll take four to six bites before they die. Tracking them is a huge undertaking because you can't really see over the grass. When hunting spine scarabs, your best bet is to run up to them, bite and keep running, charging them like a bull, and eventually you will kill them to feast on their corpse. As a flame stalker, your best bet is to run up on the bugs and bite away. Again, they will run, but you have no other choice. As an acid spitter, you will have to do the same, but if you hit C to crouch, then hold shift and W to run, it's quite the speed boost. If you choose a dragon with wings, congratulations, you can fly. Well, kinda. As a hatchling, people can pick you up, but you have to be in a group. More on that later. Once you're up in the air, they can drop you or you can wiggle free. Once free, hit the F button and you'll be able to fall with style. Your little wings aren't developed enough to lift your little body, but they can sustain a beautiful glide that will give you quite a thrill, especially your first couple of times. Once you have survived into the juvenile stage, you will be able to fly. Again, kinda. Your legs are not strong enough to thrust you into the air far enough to fly, so you'll need to find some sort of spot with a huge ledge, kinda like this one. Once you hit 20% juvenile, you should be able to fly on demand off of flat ground. Just watch out for trees. You can see your growth level by pressing I. Then at the bottom of the screen you'll see a yellow bar. If you hit enter, you can move your mouse down to that bar and it'll tell you what percentage you're at. To fly, you'll hit shift and W to run. Then jump using the space bar. As a young juvenile, your dragon will change its posture in the middle of the jump. It's kind of weird, but you'll notice it. Hit the F button and move your finger from the W button to the S button and you're going to take off. You're going to fly, you're going to be up in the air, and it's going to be amazing. Hitting W will bring you back down. Basically, uh, S and W work. If you hit S, your back end comes down. If you hit W, your back end comes up. Shift makes you go faster. Space also slows you down. Just don't slow down so much that you actually stall out. To land, get close to the ground and hold space to slow down. Once you are slow and close to the ground, you can hit the F button and it will land without taking damage. Or you can just dive bomb right into some deep water and you won't take any damage that way as well. First, let's talk about growth progression. If you look right here, you can see what level you are at hatchling, juvenile, adult, or elder. At each stage, you will be given a point, and you can put those points into your dragon. You can put them into breeding, movement, or survival, depending on how you want to play the game. You can put those points into whatever you like. Different mushrooms have different effects. They can also be very hard to find, so if you do find some, keep it in mind for future reference. It takes 80 mushrooms to go from adult to elder. The blue mushrooms are for SS. After your fourth blue mushroom, you'll be given an extra point to put into whatever you want. Eating a blue as a hatchling or a juvenile does nothing. Yellow are for the acid spitters, and the orange are for the flame stalkers. Orange does seem to be the hardest to find. I myself have never found one. The red mushrooms that are more common only fill your belly, but they do make you sick. To get rid of the sickness, wait or lay down and sleep it off. Green mushrooms restore health and fill your belly. If you see a green mushroom, eat it every time because as long as that green is there, the blue or yellow that shares its spot will not grow. Groups are a group of people that are playing on the server at that time and it'll disband as soon as you leave the server or if you change dragons. 
A clan is for life. Kind of. The chief of the clan has to log into the server every 30 days, and it must have at least 5 members. If either of these conditions is not met, then the clan will disband. Some clans in this game have over 500 members. So just because you see a dragon by itself, doesn't mean they don't have plenty of friends to take you out if they need to. To start a group, press the O button. There you will be able to start a group by inviting people into the group. If you have a large enough group and you would like to start a clan, press the O button and start a clan and invite people to join that clan as well. To unlock the melanistic skin, start out as a hatchling and play all the way through for 4 hours straight. After that the skin will be unlocked. It's that easy. I won't go into how many skins are in Day of Dragons, just know it's a lot. Some people absolutely love to play PvP. They like fighting, being in clans, going to war with other clans, all that jazz. Some people love to breed, make the best stats possible. This is done by breeding with someone that has better stats in areas that you may not. I just like to play the game, and if you haven't seen my Dragon Olympics or Kingdom Dragon series, you're missing out on a great time. 